All right, so I'm going to show you how to do the next two sections using your calculator because I think you've earned it. All right, so you can integrate using your calculator. Um, so I need you to go and hit math. Okay, I really, hang on, let me try this. Is that any better at all? All right, so if we hit math, that, that is not better at all. Hang on. There we go. All right, if you'll notice, option number nine should say F-N-I-N-T. And that means the function of integration. So you can either scroll up. Oh, look, you can't see anymore. All right, scroll up to number nine, or you can hit nine, whichever. So I'm going to choose to hit nine. Okay. And then one of two things will happen. If you have the new software, can you see this? Dad gum. If you have the new software, turn this off, then hang on, I can do this. You might see the integral with a little box below and a little box above. This is irritating the trash out of me. Okay. Um, all right. So it looks like this. All right. Little box below, little box above, and then parentheses around the box. So it'll look like this. And then D with a box. Okay. That's if you have the new software. If you have the old software, you're going to have to tell it what to do, which means when you push uh, math 9, it will say F-N-I-N-T, and it will have a set of parentheses. Um, you'll need to put the integral, or I'm sorry, the integrand, which is the function, and then your comma is right above the 7. So do the function, comma, the variable. Your calculator doesn't give a rip what variable you use. Okay, so I'm just going to, for consistency, I'm going to use X's the whole way through. And then tell me the lower limit of integration followed by the upper limit of integration. So again, I'm going to, I'm going to make one up first, just because I want you to remember what you're doing. So for instance, if I would like you to integrate between zero and one of, um, four, let's do zero to seven of four DX. Okay. So the integral would be four X and then I evaluate from zero to seven. So shoving a seven. So four times seven minus four times zero which gives me an answer of 28. Okay, so what are you finding? You're finding the formula for area under the curve. And then what we want to do is, well, what happens if I graph y equals 4? The graph of y equals 4 is simply a horizontal line that slices through the y-axis at 4. And I'm interested between 0 and 7. So I'm interested in all of this area from 0 to 7. Well, if it has a height of 4 and a width of 7, we just found the area of a rectangle, and it's 28, okay? So what we're doing is we're finding the formula for area under the curve. So basically, what, hang on, I lost the paper. Where's the paper? Okay, so it says you've got nine problems. I'm going to walk you through one of them. But like for this one, it says my lower limit is 0, my upper limit is 5, and then my function is 5x squared minus 4x plus 8. And then when you come out here, you're telling it what your variable is. So it's a dx, okay? So hit enter. It'll think for a second, and I get 198.333. It says to simplify your answer. So hit math, and then enter twice. 1, 2, and it will change it into a fraction. So 595 over 3, okay? 595 over 3. So this one says to use the substitution formula. Well, I have a calculator that at this point I know how to integrate. And so I'm just going to um, give you, this is my gift to you at the end of the coronavirus semester. All right, so I'm going to hit math 9. My limits of integration are from 0 to 7. And then I've got the square root. It says y plus 9. I don't care. I'm going to put x plus 9 and then dx, okay, hit enter, and I get 24.666, it says simplify your answer, so again, I should be reading that before, so I get 74 thirds, okay, if you got the new software, you can highlight, and then hit enter again, and it will just regurgitate what you told it, so now you just got to change your limits of integration, so negative 8 to 0, and I get, goodness, I get 52 thirds, okay, so this one was 74 thirds, 
and this one was 52 thirds. So I don't know that it should take a decimal, but just in case it doesn't, now you know how to do that. All right, so which means you should know how to do number three. You should know how to do number four. Okay, so now we are at, there's just one that I'm going to have to show you how to do um, because it's not going to take a, a decimal approximation. Um, so this one, uh, rewrite this as two to four of two times 2x minus 1 raised to the negative 2 dx and go from there, okay? This one, it's in n's, use x's. So you'll have 5x to the negative 1 plus x to the negative 4 dx, okay? This is the one that we need to walk through. So I'm going to pull this negative 6 out front. I'm evaluating from 0 to 2, and my function is e to the 5x dx. Okay, so what we learned last time is if I need to integrate an e to the, basically your u is going to be a 5x because the integral of e to the u du is e to the u. Okay, so if I can make sure, ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, so if my u is 5x, then my du is 5dx. Well, I got the dx. I need the 5. So I am going to multiply by 5 and balance with a 5. Now what I have is negative 6 fifths of e to the u du, and the integral of an e to the u du is just e to the u. Okay, so that becomes e to the 5x, because this and this is your du. So he's 5x, and we're going to evaluate from 0 to 2. So if I evaluate with 2, I get negative 6 fifths e to the 10th minus negative 6 fifths, which turns into plus 6 fifths, e to the 0, which is 1. And that's your answer. That's all it is. Okay. So the next one, again, this does not care. You can uh, round this one. You may be able to round that one. I don't know. Uh, but your variable in this one, they gave you a's, change them into x's. Okay. They gave you t's, change them into x's. And now you're done with this section, okay?